Hello, everyone. Today we are continuing continuing our video series about the I-130. This is specifically about the marriage interview, and we give you some tips for that. My name is Raluca Hanea. I'm in Lawrenceville, Georgia, and I provide immigration, estate planning, and family law services. Nina Clear, my marketing and office manager, is here with me. And we thank you for all your likes, shares, and comments as they help other people to other people to see our videos. You've explained this before in our other I-130 videos, but it's if people want to watch this by itself as a standalone, can you tell us again what is the I-130? Uh, sure. The I-130 is the petition that is uh, filed to show the relationship that you have with a person who is not a U.S. citizen or a green card holder and who wants to immigrate to the United States. And the I-130 is the first step in obtaining a green card for your relative, right? Right. The I-130 is filled out um, as the first step when applying for a green card, but its approval does not give you a green card. So only after it is approved, USCIS will process the green card application. And typically a green card application was filed at the same time as the I-130, right? Usually, yes. Okay. And usually when you're applying through this process, there is not an immediate interview, except for the one that we talked about the other day in the video, because USCIS is changing their policy if there's a minor spouse involved, right? That's right. Usually your application is being processed and the interview is the last step in the process. Okay, and who must be at the interview? Um, so if this is a marriage-based uh, green card application, then at the interview um, and the interviews in the United States, the couple must attend together. But if your spouse is not United States and this is a consular processing, um, then usually they both they do not both need to be at the interview. Do you think it's a good idea if both attend? I mean, if that is financially possible, yes, I think it's a good idea okay. if you can. <laughs> and if they both go together, do they question the couple together? It depends on the interviewer. Um, some do and some have them question, answer questions separately. Okay, so a lot of times we're like, oh my gosh, they took us in separate rooms and they're freaking out but don't always take that as a sign that you're going to be denied. No, and until you know you I don't don't think about that. It it just may be just the practice of that one person. And how long does the actual interview usually last? Uh not very long. Some clients have said it only took 50 minutes. Uh usually it's about 30 minutes long and from my experience um, more recently, it takes a little bit longer, about 45 minutes. Okay. So if are you there only for the time of the interview? Like, so you could kind of schedule 30 to 45 minutes to be there? No. Depending on where you're going, I recommend that you expect to be there about two hours. Um, although, if being interviewed at USCIS, they won't let you go in more than 15 minutes before your scheduled interview time. So if you get there earlier, they might not let you go in the building um, 15 minutes, uh, but only 15 minutes before your scheduled interview. And how, also, you may have to wait past, once you're inside, you may have to waste, uh, wait past your interview time before you're seen. So sometimes I had, um, also, I had clients sometimes who needed to fill out paperwork after the interview, so that took extra time. So you don't attend with them? Well, I strongly recommend that the attorney is present at the interview, but my clients have the option to ask me to be present or not. It's their choice. But if they want me to be present, I always prepare my clients for the interview. And do you have tips for people before they go? Yes. First, try not to 
worry. Which is probably a joke. I mean, we all it's know you're going to worry. But. <laughs> it's hard. But if you have been honest in your application, this is a mer merely a formality. Um, I would review your application together so that you know that you both are familiar with all your answers that you put in your application. And if the immigration of official is not very friendly, which happens pretty often, <laughs> uh, try not to take it personally, stay calm, and answer each question in a polite manner. Because we did have uh, some clients who were like, they were so rude. And then they responded rude back. Yeah. And then they get a notice of intent to deny. So yes, try not to do that. Yes, don't take it personally. <laughs> this they they probably try to intimidate you. I think that's they want to intimidate you. So just keep calm and just answer the question. And if you don't understand the question, it's okay to ask to ask them back and say, please repeat the question. Because it's better to ask that than answer the wrong thing. Right. Um, also know that in the United States, it is a sign of respect to look people in the eye when you talk to them. And if you do not do that because it may be more respectfully, respectful in your culture not to make eye contact, they might judge you on that. So you can um, prepare before with your friends or your family or your attorney before you go and practice that. Finally, also remember USCIS employees must work under the premise that your marriage is a fraud. So this is not a personal attack of you or your spouse of your relationship. It is still your burden to prove to them that you have a bona fide marriage. So don't be offended, like we said, by any questions and answer them to the best of your ability in a respectful way. And can you give us an idea of the questions that they might ask? Sure, they are very varied. Uh, they could range from what was your marriage ceremony like, or one of our clients was asked, what did you serve at your wedding? Um, uh, and when, make sure you and your spouse both say the same thing. Yes, because in <laughs> our case, they said different things. Um, also, they can ask what is your living or housing situation right now? Uh, what is the color of the paint and curtains uh, in your house? Who sleeps on which side of the bed? Or if the other person has any tattoos or art marks? So they will ask things that would show you know each other and live together. And do you need to bring anything with you? Yes, first you have to have the letter that you received from USCIS, um, the notice of the interview that shows the date and the time. And also on that letter, there is a list. Um, and if you didn't send in your initial application all those documents, or even if you did, it's a good idea to have a copy of everything that you send. And uh, also the originals of all the copies that you send. Um, but uh, look at that list and make sure you have all those items with you. And if your attorney tells you to bring anything else, make sure to listen to your attorney. That's right. Be right, because <laughs> you've told people to bring things and they haven't, and then they don't get an approval. Yes, usually I told my clients to also bring uh, updated um, information, like recent bills or other things that we think is going to help them during the interview. And as a reminder, do not give the immigration official your originals, right? Right. Uh, if they ask to see an original, make sure you get it back before you leave or you may never see it again. Um, I would bring the originals, but I would also bring a set of copies. So if they want to keep anything, they can keep the copy after seeing the original. Because again, we've seen this with clients. Like they have a birth certificate from some small village in Africa right? You had yep. to get it approved by the consulate and stamped and blah. It took you years to get it. Yes. They take it and bye-bye. Yes, you have it, can. don't have it again. And then when you want to become a citizen, 
You need that again. So please don't give them the original. So yes. when you go to the interview, how should you dress? What type of clothes should you wear? I would dress in clothes that you might wear at a job interview, for example. So business appropriate. Okay. And it, I know that you kind of mentioned that they should bring the letter with the date and time and then you say to bring some updated things. Um, is there anything else they should bring beside that? Yes. Um, besides the letter and the updated uh, information, also bring a government issue ID to confirm you are who you are and be sure your spouse bring, brings one too. Like an example of that, of these um, documents are a driver's license or a passport. Okay. And do, do the people being interviewed find out at the end of the interview if they are approved? From my experience, yes. Um, there are five outcomes. One, you are approved and the officer is telling you that. Um, or two, you may be given a request for additional evidence, so you need to submit more information after the interview. And remember, this is just saying, uh, we think it's a real marriage, but we want a little, bit, a little bit more proof. The third outcome is the officer may tell you that there will be additional review of your case, and you will need to wait for a letter in the mail that they uh, with asking for more information. The fourth outcome, they will set up a second interview if they think that's necessary. And the fifth outcome, uh, you are denied. Okay, so what happens if you're denied? Can you appeal that? You may be able to do it, but it's hard to say. You always need to see what was the reason for denial. And when you are denied, they will give you a letter and the letter will explain what are your options. So keep in mind, if you can appeal it, there is a very limited time to do so. And if you are able to appeal it, so you have that chance, do you recommend they hire an attorney, even if they haven't had one up to this point? Um, I do, and an attorney can review the entire record and ensure the concerns of USCIS are answered. And at least in my practice, I submit a legal brief supporting your right to the benefit that you apply for. Thank you for watching today and for all your likes and comments and shares. And if you have any questions, please reach out to us as we are always here to help. See you soon.